This is a cool little trick that I teach in my color grading masterclass. We're basically going to emulate uh, one specific feature of this guy right here. This is a black pro mist filter, which creates kind of this nice, soft, dreamy bloom around your highlights. And this is around 80 to 100 bucks. But what I'm going to show you how to do today is free using just the built-in tools in Final Cut. So if you don't want to spend cash on something like this, you can just follow the technique that we're going to do today. I'm yapping a bunch. Let's cut out the fluff and hop into it. So this effect doesn't work on every shot, but it does work on the shots that have a bright light source in them, or just highlights in the shot that are pretty bright. Once you have your clip graded and everything, so you're not going to make any different exposure adjustments on your shot, hold Option and drag your clip up. This is going to create a quick copy of your clip. Go to your effects browser and you're going to type in Luma Keyer. That's going to be the first effect that you apply. This is a free effect in Final Cut Pro. Head to the original clip that's on the primary storyline and press V to disable this clip. Select the top clip again and then go to this little slider right here. All you're going to do is take this far left slider. These are your shadows and you're going to swing this to the right until only the very brightest parts of your shot are selected. Usually it's about this distance, but I'll show you some examples where you may want to tweak this and adjust based on the luma values or the brightness in your shot. So let's leave it right about here. And the next step is to add a Gaussian blur effect. So you just go to your effects browser again, type in Gaussian blur and double click to apply that. You might be saying, Dylan, what the heck is this? This looks like garbage. Yes, it does. Let me show you how to make it not look like garbage. So let's re-enable this bottom clip on the primary storyline by pressing V. And that already is giving you a little idea of what we're going to be doing or what this effect is going to be doing to our shot. Usually what I like to do is bring the amount down to either 2 to 15, somewhere in that range. And then I like the look of the blur boost, so I just increase the blur boost a little bit. And if you find that perhaps you want more of your shot selected, so more of the upper mid-tones, you can then drag this out. And you'll see as we do this, it's now starting to affect a little too much because we dragged it all the way to the shadows. But if we keep it right here, it's kind of jumping in to the mid-tones just a bit and creating this cool, dreamy effect. And then from here, you can go in and tweak it. So if you wanted it to be a little more prominent, you could increase the blur boost. If you wanted it to be just the highlights, bring this back down. I like to ping pong these different sliders back and forth until I find a look that I like. So basically, if I disable this top clip again by pressing V, you'll see it just adds this dreamy outline around the edges of the very brightest parts of the shot. Let's say you have a shot next to it that you would like to do the same thing for, but you don't want to have to go through that same process. All you got to do, press Option and drag up to quick copy that. You could have this selected and do the new trick that was added to a recent update of Final Cut. You would basically just select these two and either drag to the viewport when the playhead is over that clip that you would like to apply the effects to. And yes, this looks like garbage, but let me explain the second way. Or you can simply just drag these to the clip that's over top of the original one. So if this happens, if this blurry mess happens, all you have to do is go and move this shadow slider to the right until you find an amount that you like. You could park it here and then you could go in and start adjusting the different blur settings to get a look that you like. I like something like this, maybe really dreamy for this look. And this looks okay, not too bad. It's a lot, but perhaps that's the look you're going for. You can also, if you want a slightly different look, you can take this highlights slider here and just pull this out. And this is going to give you even more of a, a dreamier look. It is a lot, but perhaps that's what you're going for. And then from here, you could dial back the blur boost, but this is just a almost like a nice soft halo around our subject here. And because this is a blur effect, it's blurring the background a little bit too. So we're getting kind of that uh, shallow depth of field background separation look. Another useful tip here, let's say you have your effect set up the way that you want. You know you'll be applying it to other shots. Yes, you can drag the effects directly to the different clips or you can go to Save Effects Preset with that top clip selected 
And this is basically saving any adjustments that you've made in here. So we wanna deselect the transform options. We only want these to be transferred over to whatever clip we apply this preset to. And then we could rename this. We could rename it Dreamy Glow Effect. Save it in whatever custom folder you'd like. Just hit save. And here's kind of a good example. If you have a pop-up or for example, something like this, that's like an animation and you want it to have that dreamy glow feel, just hold option and drag up, we'll copy that. Then all you do is you go to your effects browser, you could type in dreamy glow effect, apply it to that top clip. And then you might have to go in and just tweak things just a bit. And then already looking really good pretty stylized, but adds a nice glow effect to the very brightest parts of your shot. If you want to learn how to put text behind your subject in Final Cut Pro for free, no plugins needed, click this video right here. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.